Hello everybody, my name is Vita, I hope you're well, and if you're watching this video, that means you probably make games with Unity. If that's the case, you might have found yourself in a situation where your game has multiple scenes that all need the same prefabs instantiated, like a player, a game manager, etc. You might also have found yourself hating having to manually drag and drop all these prefabs in every time you create a new scene. So, what we want is instantiating some prefabs in every scene without having to manually drag and drop each and every one of them. What I'm gonna show you now is a very quick and simple way to avoid having to do that using scriptable objects. We're going to create a new script containing a class that I have called scene-setup-config that inherits from the scriptable object. Scriptable object-derived classes differ from mono behaviors as the latter are used to create components that attach to game objects and their instances usually live in the scene. The former, on the other end, are used to create custom assets that usually contain some kind of information about your game or project, from item databases to some system settings. These usually live in the project window, but please do not take the points in the parentheses as definitions, I will link the unit documentation on scriptable objects in the description. So, for reasons that I'm gonna explain later, we're gonna need a Unity Editor namespace in addition to the Unity Engine 1 that we always need. Then, we're going to make a new class inherit from scriptable objects and you can already see that I have added a create asset menu attribute on top of that. This will allow us to create a custom asset from the project window or the toolbar. Filename is the name of the new file that will be created and menu name is the menu path that will allow us to create one as you can see on the screen right now. Then, what we're gonna do is define some public game object preferences. I've put some that I deem useful and that are probably in some way present in every project, but you can put whatever you want and your game needs. I also added another prefabs array to put all sorts of miscellaneous prefabs that might not fall under the categories I listed above, so that I won't need to change the code every time I need a new prefab in the future. We're going to create a new private method that I call perform scene setup. And from within this method, I will call for all of our prefabs another method named instantiate prefab that I defined and will show you in a moment. Again, you don't need to have the same prefabs that I'm using, instead, you will want to add the ones that are best for your game. Instantiate prefab would be a public void method that receives a game object argument if a null value is passed. It will simply return, while if it is actually assigned, it will call the prefab utility dot instantiate prefab function to instantiate the object in the scene. The prefab utility class is only available with the Unity Editor namespace, and the reason we are using this over the classic object dot instantiate method is that we don't want to simply instantiate a clone of the prefab, but actually maintain its prefab reference. You can see what I mean on the screen right now. We are at the final stretch, but perhaps the trickiest. We need to create a static method that I called setup current scene with a menu item attribute. This will allow us to call it from within the editor under the path defined by the string parameter. The percent %g at the end is to specify a keyboard shortcut for our function, and that stands for command g on macOS or control g on Windows. I will also link the menu item documentation in the description. From within this method, we get a reference to the first instance of our class that we can find in the resources of a project and, if it is not novel, just call the perform scene setup method that I've shown earlier. Now, I'll show you what to do in the editor. It's really simple. First thing first, we want to create a prefabs and a resources folder in our project. Then drag the prefabs folder all of the objects we want to instantiate in other scenes and create a prefab for each one of them. Now, let's go into the resources folder and right-click, follow the path that we specify in the create asset menu attribute and yeah, simply create a new asset. Let's now assign all the prefabs to our scene setup configuration fields. Last thing last, let's try creating a new scene. As expected, we can see there is a main camera and a directional light as always. What we want is simply go to the window, my tools, scene setup or whatever path you have set in the menu item attribute in the scene setup config class and just click our function names. Ta-da! You can see that objects are now in the scene and that they are displayed blue, 
which means that they are still linked to the prefabs and every change we make to the prefab will reflect across all the scene. That was it, it's a simple tool for a simple fix but the times where you have to drag and drop 20 prefabs in every new scene are over. If you have any doubts, requests or idea, feel free to share them in the comments below and I will try to reply to most of them. That being said, I've been Peter and if you decide to stick around, see you next time.